of the high street, right? The backbone of British communities helping to keep the economy up and running. Nobody's interested in the high street anymore. People don't shop there. People don't go there. When was the last time you went to a high street? (laughs) Got me there, kiddo. But then that's because I've got my afflictions. Well, no, but that's part of the problem. No, but that's part of the problem. It's hard to get there. Um, I went to a pharmacy on my nearby high street, but parking was impossible. Parking's there. And it was just an unpleasant experience. And next time I made a mental note, I'll go to one of those out of town places. Yeah, where parking is available or people order stuff online. Or just the big supermarket, which has a pharmacy as well. Costs are rising. Um, There's um, antisocial behaviour, they say, in the high street uh, with kebab vans and various things like this and people gathering around these of an evening spilling out of pubs and whatever, whatever. Labour seems to think that the high street is under threat. So today the Shadow Business Secretary will be outlining her plans to help uh, with the high street. But ahead of that, our economic and business editor, Liam Halligan, has taken, taken to the streets and he's been speaking with local shopkeepers. In Chelmsford's much-loved market, Mark Smith's preparing for the pre-Christmas rush. His family have run this butcher's stall for more than 50 years, and Mark has a good feel for the state of consumer confidence. Even here in Chelmsford, he says, just 30 miles from London, a lot of families are still struggling. Got to help the customer first, I think, as in you've got to drop, to try and help the kids out with the interest rates on their mortgages, you know, because we all went for it in years and years ago, it went up, but if they could just do that, just help them out with their mortgages, their rents, all this type of thing, then they can pass what they're saving onto the high street and the high street could pick up. Mark and his team have noticed the cost of living squeeze and rising food, energy and mortgage costs means customers are adapting, going for cheaper cuts of meat. If your mortgage goes up, you've got to cut something and you can cut your food. They chop cheaper, you know, where instead of... You've noticed that, yeah? Yeah, um, and they've been buying stewing stuff. A lot of them have gone back to basics where they're making their own stews, where before they was uh, going to dearer cuts of meat, and, but now they've gone back to making their own stews, a lot of them. Uh, even the youngsters, before it was all the older people, but even the youngsters doing it. Hello, Dan, never waste a journey, how can I help? Across town travel consultant Dan Salmon says the holiday market's splitting into two. At the moment, there's a real split down the middle. Um, I think on one hand, with a, obviously a lower disposable income coming in, there's less spending on holidays, people are probably taking less holidays as well. Um, with the kind of uh, the, the state that the actual economy is in at the moment, there's a lot of uncertainty. But on the other hand, the luxury travel market has been absolutely booming still over the last 12 months. Um, your gov recently did a poll and people are spending more than they've ever spent before on their holidays. Um, but what people are looking for is more meaningful experiences. So the luxury market is willing to spend for that. Like most customer facing folk I met in Chelmsford, Dan says the economy's on a knife edge, on a trajectory that could go either way, but he's hoping for the best. I've been optimistic for quite a while now. (laughs) It's how long can that go on for? But I think being honest with you, I think it can only get better. Um, But yeah, from what I'm seeing, it's really, really unstable at the moment. And I think it could go either way, um, but I just hope it's going to improve for the better. Liam Halligan, GB News, Chelmsford. Oh, mm. depressing, depressing. So much but to get into in that. But it's shed. interesting that a lot of people still have money to pay for cruises and adventures. Well, not just, yeah, but luxury. You know, this is high-end yeah. holidays. That's what I said. Surprised to hear that. Cruises and adventures. I thought you were not just... Not high-end. No, 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 I know. Not much higher-end. No, I, like, I was agreeing. I was just get... embellishing what you were saying. You know, have, you gone, have you ever gone on a cruise? Um, I've been on a ferry crossing to Santander. No, that's not the same. But it was, it had like, you know, a cinema and it had swimming pools yes. and it had like a beauty salon and it was yeah. a very exciting it's experience. It's all very nice if the sea's calm. It was horrific. We all lost weight, put it that way. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, that's not, you don't want that. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love a cruise. I just I could see love- you... Filling, you know, passing I mean, out your days. I'd have to go on my own. On a cruise. Oh, you'd have plenty of company, don't she, you worry my, about my that. My wife doesn't do motion, any motions. You get motion sickness in, in, in anything. But so she won't do cruises. So if there's anybody out there who would be a companion. By the way, I have offered before to come on a cruise with you. Will you Hello? keep quiet? A co- companion out there, just friendship. Oh, don't you know? worry about it then. I won't come. 
I would love to go on a cruise with you. I said somebody was attractive, oh, though. I said, oh, oh, gosh. But anyway, that would be nice. A nice companion. Ugh. Somebody could talk about Fine. the arts with. To, and they, please. You know, I don't want someone there just for my body. You know, being there for all You want that. to talk about the Elgin marbles and all that sort of stuff. The Elgin marbles, that is a thing. That is Give a thing. Give them back, for goodness I sake. I don't understand it. But it really, be them. careful what you start there, because <laughs> people will get very, very upset. But apparently they weren't the Greeks in the first place. They were owned by the Turks. Oh. The Turks had occupied Greece at that stage when Lord Elgin went in and, um, and bought them. And the guy, guy sold them to him. So he felt he bought them. 